should be off and running. So I, I didn't ask you, what time is it there? Uh, 6 p.m. Ah, oh, all right. So you're staying late. I appreciate that. Kind of putting in the long days and having to having to chat with me at the end of your day. I feel for Oh, you. that's fine. It's fine. At least you're not in Australia or New Zealand where I'm there 13 hours in advance of us. So. That's going to make it pretty challenging for demos and, uh, you know, just general uh, sales conversations, huh? It does. You know, we talk about later on what keeps me up at night. Well, doing demos to the guys in Australia and New Zealand, that's what really does keep me up. It literally keeps you up at night. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me. Fantastic. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So we'll kind of get into uh, a little of your history and what brought you down this path to MSP Easy Tools and... And uh, I try not to be too biased in these conversations, but I'm pretty biased, I guess, in, on your space and what you guys are doing in particular because of just how you guys have come on the scene, how comprehensive the platform is. And so I'll, 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 I'll try to reserve some of my, my biases and my comments, but uh, I'm sure we'll get into it. But so let's, let's take it back as we normally do. Let's take it back to uh, early Andrew days. What were early Andrew days like? Early Andrew days, well, I started life in um, a place called Warsaw in the West Midlands, so smack bang in the middle of the UK. Um, you know, I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a, a chemist into chemistry, huh. and uh, I ended up going and joining the ceramics industry. So, you know, I used to work for Wedgwoods uh, when I first started. So the first 10 years of my career was in ceramics. So they used to say that I had slip running through my veins. <laughs> Um, you know, because I was into manufacturing process and all the rest of it, nothing to do with IT. And I saw the writing on the wall for the IT, for the ceramic industry. Uh, you know, there aren't many pots being made now in uh, Stoke-on-Trent, which is which was 30 miles further north from where we were when I was born. Um, and I decided rather stupidly that I enjoyed IT. So I went and created my own IT company at that time. So 25, 26 years ago now, uh, I started my MSP. So for 25 years, I ran an MSP um, and yeah. all the problems and all the pains that go with running an MSP, I learned them. Wow. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a, a, a stupidly or stupid decision, but yeah. you know, what was the, what was the early interest? How, what was the, uh, the chemistry, the interest in chemistry? How'd that develop early on? Uh, to be honest, it was probably, it was the only subject I was any good at at school, um, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. And, and, you know, Ceramics is inorganic chemistry, um, but I, I learned a lot about process and automation and making things work properly uh, and the sort of managing people, managing teams, managing how people's expectations are. And, you know, that just carried itself into the IT company. Uh, you know, grew it from a one-man band, the, the MSP, um, from a one-man band. It wasn't an MSP at the time. It was a break fix company mm -hmm. where you do absolutely anything to put money in the bank to pay, you know, to feed the kids. Uh, you know, I've got three young daughters at the time. I, I stepped out of a well-paid job, uh, safe and secure at the time, into, yeah, <laughs> the unknown. Into, into running my own, running my own business. Uh, not knowing where the next penny was coming from. Uh, but, you know, my wife supported me uh, and Jean still works with me now. Uh, we've been married 37 years this year. Wow. So, you know, so she's always worked with me and helped me to do things and been a, a massive inspiration. But, so, you know, when you've got young kids, you've got to work hard and you just crack on and do it. So, you know, when I sold the business, which was the beginning of uh, last year, 2022, uh, we sold after 25 years. Um, we'd grown that from one from nothing to 180 tenants, roughly two and a half thousand users, and I sold it for the price that I wanted. You know, which was really what I was trying to get to. You know, get out at that point. You know, I'd done my time, served my sentence. You know, I'm so negative on being an MSP. It's not. It's a fantastic life to be in. Um, but you know, we'll talk about the issues that I had. And what created the tool, you know, MSP easy tools out of that MSP. Yeah. So well, let's you kind of keep going backward for a minute and then we'll we'll progress yeah. get to uh present day. But you bring up something I think that that's uh 
you know, obviously just about every MSP or every, every MSP owner, any business owner can relate to, right? It's like taking that yeah. step off the ledge, you yes. know, and I remember I had, you know, this was pre-kids. I had, uh, I had a dog. I had a, had a girlfriend who's now my, my wife, but I remember I had a nice cushy job at a, yeah. uh, at a financial institution and I uh, had this crazy idea to start this consulting firm in DC and and at that point, we didn't have all the, you know, the obligations at that point. I think we, we had had a, had bought my first house, but that was about the extent of the obligation. But, but uh, take, I took the step off the ledge and it was, you know, it was, you know, worked out well, I guess, but you yeah. said you were taking the step off the ledge and you had three young daughters at home. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a pretty big step. I think you, I think the thing more than anything was I'd been working so hard for other people and I could see them prospering. They getting all the benefits of my hard work. I'm thinking, why am I doing it for them? Why not do it for me? You know, I, I'm making all this innovation. I'm doing all these changes. I'm earning the company lots and lots of money, but actually it doesn't, doesn't, you know, you only work for yourself. You know, at the end of the day, you work to live, you know, that's it for the money that it generates to provide the lifestyle that you want. And, you know, I wanted more for my kids and, you know, now my grandchildren, you know, I want them to, you know, I want the best for them. And working for somebody else, yes, you can earn really well working for the larger companies. But, you know, some people are born to do entrepreneurial things, to step out and to take the risks. You know, I made mistakes along the way, some big ones. Uh, but you learn from your mistakes. You certainly do learn from your mistakes. Um, and you get driven by what you can achieve and how you can help other people at the end of the day. Yeah. Are there any kind of looking back, right? I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a journey, 25 years. I mean, are there any like start with like key moments, right? Any, any like really interesting inflection points where, you know, maybe early on you, you, you took this step off the ledge and, you know, there's the, the unknown, but was there a moment where it's like, all right, I got this or, you know, it's starting to move in the direction that you thought it was going to move in? I think there were times, you know, first off, you'll take anything, you'll do anything to earn a crust. Um, so, you know, web design, database design, fixing some PCs, working for homeowners, those kind of things. As an MSP, you'll do absolutely anything. That's so but the end stuff. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm sure everyone listening is like, just you totally relate. My goodness. Yeah, Totally. Yeah. But then mm. it suddenly dawned on you, you can't be an expert in all, in everything. So, you know, I switched to just being business to business, only doing IT support, not doing websites and database and all the other things. And then I suppose I was still, I was getting there slowly but surely. But then I had this, I don't know who I was talking to, but someone told me to double my price, double my pricing. Because I was doing relatively low cost um, and I was struggling to get clients, you know, as you do as an MSP. Um, and someone told me to double my price. And I did that. I, you know, I just literally overnight doubled the price to my existing client base. Now, I lost 20% of them, which was fine. But I, the other 80% stayed with me at double the cost. And I actually found it easier to get new clients because people are expecting to pay a certain price for a service that they value. And if you go in too cheap, people don't value the service. They don't think that you're up to it. Yeah, so, that, that's, gosh, it's so spot on, right? Because it's hard to, that, that in particular, right? Especially early days, yeah. right? It's hard to say, I'm going to double my price, you know, yeah. and, and uh, you know, kind of let the dice roll and or the cards fall or the chips or whatever the saying is. And, and yeah. it's extremely hard to do. Right. But to your point, I mean, you had the, the other 80% that were there because of the value and, and they saw the value, they got the value. And, you know, I assume kind of, that's one of those, you know, just domino effects, right? You've yeah. got, you know, better clients, quality of clients, better quality yeah. of revenue. And yeah. then, you know, moving forward, I assume you're, a little bit more picky about what customers you're taking on. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, uh, you know, over 25 years, you learn a lot, mm. hell of a lot. But probably about 10 years ago, I started firing clients, um, you know, problematic clients, clients that, you know, gave them the choice. You know, it wasn't literally I'm going to fire you. It was like, Mr. Client, 
we, we don't seem to gel very well. Uh, you know, perhaps you need to find somebody else. You know, there's that option. Or, you know, sometimes you just have to increase the costs on them. You know, if they are problematic and awkward and all the rest of it, increase your costs. Then at least if you do know that you've got to deal with them, at least you can smile thinking I'm actually earning some more money out of you. Because, you know, normally the ones that complain the most and tie up most of your time, the ones that are paying you the least money. Um, so don't suffer them. You know, I can say this to other MSPs. I can't say this to the end clients, but, you know, as an MSP or an ex-MSP to an MSP, the clients need you more than you need them. And it, it sounds harsh, but, you know, be choosy about who you work with. You know, not only does it affect you as the business owner, but it's also your staff as well. You know, how many times as an MSP owner, you, you see the phone ring and you see your engineers not wanting to answer it because they see who's calling. You know, that, that, they get that sinking feeling. Mm. And, you know, when you actually get rid of those clients, not only do you feel happier, but your staff pick up as well. Uh, you know, Paul Green once said, it was a couple of years ago, um, he put it out just before Christmas. Make your staff happy, fire a client for Christmas. Um, you know, it, it's a bit of a joke from Paul's side, but it, it's actually true. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to get rid of bad clients and don't be afraid to increase your costs. You know, you've got to stay and maintain your, your you know, the clients still want you to be there next year, the year after, the year after that. If you stay at low cost and don't add those costs, put the pricing on top of it, you know, annually, because you need to increase your costs, you're not going to be there when you need to, when the, those clients need you. Just don't be afraid of it. You ever thought about so getting in, into coaching? <laughs> So you like that just the, the, the way you describe it, the passion. And, and I, I love that. I love that, uh, that line that, you know, they need you more. You need them, you know, yeah. it, it, that's psychologically, that's a hard thing, especially for the, yeah. you know, you know, the, the ones that are just starting out or just starting to mature. It's, it's hard, but when you get to that inflection point where you, you kind of understand that, yeah, yeah, they, they absolutely do need you more than they need, than you need them. You know, it's, yeah. it's a whole different mindset, a whole different dynamic. And, um, because there, there, there is plenty of MSPs in the world, but how many of them are good MSPs? You know, there are plenty of people that play with it. You know, you know, I started in the back bedroom. I did, but I grew and I learned and I became a very good, well, you know, a sizable MSP. But unfortunately, there's quite a lot of poor IT companies out there that give give the rest of the good ones a bad name. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to go up against them. You know, the, the clients will find the good MSPs and they they want to pay. They they don't want to talk about IT. They just don't. They just want to pay somebody a chunk of money to take away the problems. That's all they want. They just want to work. That's all they ever get on with. You know, we used to say at my MSP, you know, we're doing a good job when you don't need to call us. Mm -hmm. And people and at my clients would pay me not to cut so they didn't need to call us. Yeah. And they were yeah. happy. You know, it's yeah. not about turning up and being in front of them all the time. They never want to see you as an MSP. They don't want you on in the. They don't want you on on prem. They don't want you to be always constantly meddling. They just want to know that the IT system's working. But if they have got a problem, they know it's going to get responded to like that. That's what they want. Yeah, yeah. It's almost it's kind of the same uh, philosophy. Of, you know, you don't want to see your doctor. <laughs> no, right. I mean, maybe for the annual checkup or something like that. But the more you see it, you know, the worse off you are. And and yeah, uh, yeah you're you're absolutely right. So, so you've built this, you know, amazing organization, you know, over yeah. twenty five years. Was there? Is it kind of get to the point where all right, I've been there, done that, kind of solved, kind of checked that yeah. off the list, and it's a good time to exit and and think about starting something new. But what was, what was that kind of? Kind of the tail end of it what was that like getting to the point to yeah i mean we, we had i'll be honest we lost quite a few people in our family mm. uh you know we lost gene lost a couple of her sisters at relative a young age uh we lost my mother-in-law and it sort of put life into perspective you know mm. what are we here for you know we also started to get grandchildren at that time you know around roughly that age um when, when those things happened you know it's about life Businesses that, you know, what I say to other business owners, 
The business is only there for one reason, to provide you, provide you, the business owner, with a lifestyle you want. That's all it's there for. Every member of staff, every client is there to feed that lifestyle. And, you know, probably four or five years ago, the lifestyle became way more important than actually the business. You know, the business was growing to feed the lifestyle, but I didn't want to be in the business that much more. So I actually grew the, changed the way that I worked. So I ended up at the end of the, you know, in the last year or so, where I was only doing like four hours a, a week in the business because I got everything else. I got the right people in place, the right automations in place. Everything was running. All I was doing was literally dipping my toe in, you know, dipping my eye over the pot and just checking that everything was working fine. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I suppose the other thing that happened, which would be, which is unusual for most MSPs, is I actually started to form MSP Easy Tools. You know, that, that grew while I was the business owner of the MSP. Um, but that just happened by chance. You know, oh, MSPs yeah. started by chance. Well, you, now you, you, the tease is out there, so we gotta we gotta understand how this thing started. <laughs> so you know, we knew that we wanted to exit the business. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted to exit the MSP, but at the time we didn't think it was big enough, smart enough, growing enough to make to give us the a good value. And this is so like five we five years back or so. Right. Well, yeah, five years, maybe six, seven years ago. But you know, we did some various things. We did some mastermind groups. Uh, you know, how do we market and, and sell better? We were doing that with um, a great guy in the UK called Nigel Bottrell. Um, he does, he, he can sell sand to the Arabs. You know, <laughs> he's a fantastic sales guy, but he doesn't understand implicitly IT companies. Um, and we went and joined Paul Green's mastermind group. Um, and we used to travel 150 miles once a month down to Milton Keynes. Um, if you've never been, don't bother. Um, it's not the prettiest place in the world. Um, but what was great was we met up with a dozen other IT companies. And we were there to talk about marketing, how to grow our, our MSPs through marketing. We invariably we'd talk about staff, we'd talk about clients, and ultimately we'd talk about IT problems. Uh, and every time the other guys talked about or complained about Office 365, I'd say, I've got a tool for that. I've got a report for that. Don't have that problem anymore. And I actually earn money selling Office 365 to my clients. Well, it didn't take the clients, take the other guys in the room many months to turn around and say, Andrew, can we have those tools, please? Now, the tools were written for my MSP, so they were very secure, but we could see all the data. Now, if you were an MSP in America, you wouldn't care that I could see all your data, not implicitly bothered. But, you know, if you were... 20 miles up the road or 30 miles up the road, you would be concerned because you'd be worried that I'd be coming poaching your clients. Sure. So what we did, we completely rewrote all the software. Um, so all we can see is numbers. And we separated the MSP from MSP Easy Tools, created the business, and, and, and it started. Um, and that's where MSP Easy Tools came from. It came from the other MSPs asking for the stuff that we'd actually been using for probably eight, nine years. We'd, we'd been using it for a really long time. You know, we started, if we went back 10 years, we were managing probably about 150 on-prem servers. SBS 2011, uh, 2008, you know, when Microsoft in the early teens, in, in the early noughties, Microsoft were pushing us to sell SBS mm -hmm. uh, to all our clients. Well, we were good at it. You know, I could go in and sell an SBS server, no problem. And, you know, we changed it every two or three, uh, every three or four years. So I had lots of cash coming in. Then uh, didn't know what monthly recurring revenue meant. Didn't mean anything to me. I just got money pouring in. Um, then Microsoft dropped the bombshell that SBS 2014 wasn't coming. Mm -hmm. We've got to learn this new thing called Office 365. You know, what the hell was that? <laughs> so we jumped in feet first. Um, and over a two-year period, we migrated all but six of our clients to Office 365, turning the servers off as we went. Um, you know, and you know, I always thought it was great. I'm removing the servers, so I haven't got that headache anymore. Um, you know, 10 years ago, I was probably employing 12 engineers, three or four third line guys. And I don't know what your third line guys were like, and you know, but mine, horrible, hmm. you know 
pretentious guys. They only ever did what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it. Didn't want to talk to the first line guys. They upset my clients. Um, and they cost me a fortune. Mm -hmm. So I was devastated when I didn't need them and they gave me the noticing and because we just hadn't got a service to support anymore. So, you know, that helped me bring the cost down. Also reduce the number of staff that I needed because, you know, we'll talk about what the tools do in a couple of minutes, yeah. but you know, it's, it's, it was that transition, you know, we thoroughly embraced moving to the cloud. You know, my target was to completely, re you know, remove the server. Every instead of going and telling the client you need a new server, it was, why well, you need that server? The client would argue with me to keep the servers. And I was yeah. saying, no, let's get rid of it. Let's reduce your costs. Let's reduce your overheads. I did something really stupid, though. I didn't put something in place to replace the monthly, re to replace the revenue that was coming in from the servers. Mm. So, you know, I fixed that. It took me a few years, but... Blimey hell, I nearly killed my MSP then because uh, I did it really stupidly. But you, know, you live in, you learn. Yeah, definitely do. So you've mentioned, uh, you know, Paul Green a couple of times, you know, and yeah. uh, just it sounds like he had a, a pretty uh, pretty big impact on kind of sales and marketing and just direction. You know, I hear Paul's name all the time. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess, can you elaborate on that? I mean, I guess it sounds like you've got a yeah. good relationship with him as well. Paul, I get on really well with Paul. He's highly motivated. You know, I'm an MSP. As an MSP owner, I was a techie. I didn't believe in this crap, sorry, uh, this thing called marketing. It didn't matter to me. You know, I was getting clients through word of mouth referral and all of that, and it takes a while. I never paid any attention to marketing. And then I realized, actually, I was completely wrong. All the bigger MSPs, the MSPs that have grown much faster than me, they cared about marketing. You know, they actually paid attention to it. Um, took me 15 years to figure that out, maybe a bit more, but, you know, in hindsight, if I'd realized that at the start, I'd have been a much, in a bit much bigger MSP. But, you know, Paul Green, he asks questions. He understands, he does understand the MSP world. Doesn't understand IT, but he understands the IT world. Um, and, and he just... It was bringing us all together. There was 12 MSPs, and he's got multiple groups at the top. Um, it, it, the chance to actually talk to other MSPs and talk about the real problems, you know. As an MSP owner, you don't – there's nobody you normally you talk to. You know, you might bump into another MSP owner that's in the same city, but, you know, how's life going? Yeah, it's really good, you know. Yeah, we're doing really well. No, we're not. We're struggling <laughs> like everybody else is, but you can't admit that to your competitors, can you? But you can in a room where you meet every month and you're from a massively diverse location. And Paul brought that together. It was a great environment to work in. Yeah, it's such a wonderful thing. You know, I, I'm a part of a CEO group and, and um, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a great group, great group of uh, guys and gals, uh, less like tech focused. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I kind of struggle with that sometimes myself, but um, what you guys, I mean, that, that whole kind of mastermind peer group, you know, especially when you have others that are peers in your industry that can relate to, you know, the exact problem that you're going through from a yeah. delivery standpoint or technology standpoint, that's pretty powerful, you know, and, and you, I guess you've seen kind of the rise of, of these peer groups over the last uh, couple of years, which is, which yeah. has been great. But I, I, I still think that uh, most MSPs sleep on how powerful they can be, you know, just from yes. just for relationship, just checking in to, you know, to your point, right? I mean, a lot of times somebody asks you, oh, how's business? Oh, it's great. Everything's great. <laughs> you know, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh, you know, you know, and a lot of time, yeah. yeah. I think the one thing that came out of the, the, the mastermind groups, it's not what you know that's important. You know, and I, I use this term a lot. You know what you know, but you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's the dangerous thing. You don't know what you don't know till you get bitten by it. Um, and some of those, you can be bitten really badly. Mm -hmm. uh, and the peer groups actually open my eyes to some other things going on and better ways of working. And to be fair, people's problem, their problems, I didn't even know was my problem until they said they talked about it. 
Wow. But it's wow. great to help and, you know, to interact with other MSPs. And for, you know, I do quite a lot. You know, I'll do my demos when I'm demoing off MSP Easy Tools to MSPs. And it's really nice to just give them, you know, they're just starting out. And I try and give them some words of wisdom. The mistakes I made, the problems I went through, you know, what's best, how to get avoid them. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So let's let's get into present day. Let's get into okay. MSP Easy Tools. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a big fan. And so let's uh, you take us through it. Take us out, you know, kind of an understanding of, of where the concept came from. But you know, take us through how you kind of put this together and and how you guys are achieving so much uh, success right now. Okay. So I say the tool was born out of my MSP. You know, I always say to the MSPs that I'm, work, that I'm talking to, the tools weren't written for you. They were written for me. The problems I was having the issues that I was having with my staff and my clients, you know, and, and I say the very first problem that we dealt, we dealt with was the fact that I was losing sleep. And I mean, you know, we talk about things that keep you awake at night. Well, something that definitely kept me awake at night long time ago was something suddenly dawned on me. What would happen if one of my engineers were conned out of their username and password uh, for Office 365? You know, my engineers were... We're, capable, we're able to fix all the problems in all of my tenants. You know, way back then, I got 150 tenants 10 years ago. Uh, you know, my biggest fear was waking up one morning to be told that all of our tenants had been breached. Mm. You know, that was literally, I stopped sleeping because I was going through and checking it all myself. Now, obviously, couldn't do that all the time. So of the 12 engineers I'd got, I got them in rotation, two engineers per day, constantly checking all the settings in Office 365. You know, it's it's a pain in the neck. It's a horrible job. Really expensive as well if you're the business owner because those engineers aren't being productive. All they're actually doing is checking my fear. You know, MSPs say, well, Microsoft have got it covered with MFA. Well, MFA is as much use as a chocolate fire guard. It's really easy to breach. And any MSP that thinks it's the going to catch everything, well, I'm afraid you've got a big catch up, you know, you got a big wake up call. It's simple to breach. Mm -hmm. You know, the easiest way is the MS, the, the cyber criminals just send a request. You know, if your engineers have got um, on the mobile phones, they just approve the access because they don't care. They do mm -hmm. care, but they don't think, unfortunately. But again, even if they don't do that, it's easy to breach. So, you know, the first problem was that sleeping at night, knowing that all of my tenants were protected. Uh, you know, the last thing I want is a client to call up and say, I've got big problems going on. So, you know, by checking all the system and one of the tools that we've got, or multiple tools, goes and checks for unusual activity in the platform, you know, in the M365 platform, and it's a live data. We don't very rarely use the global audit log because the global audit log can be delayed. Microsoft don't always publish straight to it. It can, we've seen it in two, three, four days before they've updated the global audit log, but our mm -hmm. system scans every hour for on at least, you know, it's, it's constantly checking. It's looking for all the signs of cyber criminal activity inside the platform. But, you know, we're also aware that um, engineers ignore full, lots of false positives. So our system only sends something when it needs to be read. You know, if it doesn't send anything, everything's fine. But what we do do is we keep badgering the first line engineers because it's a, it's a tool for first line engineers to not only identify the problem, but fix it. Um, so it keeps sending the alerts every single hour until the engineers actually do something about it. Because, you know, I'm sure MSPs get lots of, you know, see a warning, it comes in once from the Microsoft platform, if it comes in at all, you know, because if a cyber criminal gets in, the first thing to do is turn the warnings off. Yeah. They can't stop our warning platform because we're not actually inside it. We're in the Azure platform monitoring everything else. Um, and then, you know, that's so we, we've got this alerting function that looks for everything bad. But alerting is one thing. Great. So I've got an alert. How do I damn well fix it then? Mm -hmm. So what we've got, every single alert has got a companion tool for it. And the companion tool will actually mm -hmm. fix the problem. And it's built for first line engineers to fix because, you know, what, going back to the problems I was having uh, at my MSP, 
We had a target at my MSP to fix 90% of all our support calls in less than 15 minutes. But my first line guys were failing because they didn't have the skill sets. They didn't understand Office 365. It takes so long to train them. You know, it's not a quick learn. Um, so I needed a method whereby they could fix things in seconds. Uh, and I normally, on the demo, give a demonstration. And I, I say, my first line engineers with less than a week's experience in IT will fix a problem faster than your best engineer can even sign into the platform. Wow. So we've got this graphical user interface whereby engineers click a button to fix problems, and it does really complicated things. The things that they, an experienced engineer, 20, 30 minutes to do, we can do in 20 or 30 seconds. Mm. Uh, and you have to see it to believe it because, you know, lots of MSDs, please think, no, oh, I've got to learn and train and spend hours and lots of money getting people up to qualifications in Office 365. You don't. You know, my MSP was based in Stoke-on-Trent, which is the home of a betting company called Bet365. Sure. So what would happen is I'd spend four or five years training an engineer up to make him really good at his job. <laughs> Bet365 would advertise a job at um, a lot more money than I could pay because mm -hmm. they were working continental shifts. So they'd work seven days a week, 24-7. So they'd go and depart and I'd have to start again. So I got sick of engineers leaving me. You know, we our engineers would last a long time, five, six, seven years, but they'd ultimately disappear off. Nine times out of 10 to this Bet365 company. So uh, I stopped training them. Stop training them how to use Office 365. I trained them on Micro Monte. I trained them in using our toolkit. Uh, and that makes it so much better. So, you know, Brilliant. fixing that. <laughs> so we fixed the problem with me sleeping at night and getting alerted. Fix the first line support engineers so they can fix virtually all the problems in Office 365 uh, at a click of a button. And then the very last thing that I had to fix was monthly recurring revenue. I told you I killed month recurring revenue when I turned all these servers off. Mm -hmm. So I had to come up with something whereby I got money coming into the business for something that my clients needed. You know, I could never sell them something they didn't want or didn't need. Well, they needed to know about security on Office 365. You know, if you look at everything that MSPs look after, what's the most important product, the one that's got all the data in it, you know, that it gets compromised – is going to kill the end user and in turn could kill the MSP. Yeah. Um, it's their Office 365 account. So, you know, as an example, at our MSP, we gained a new client. This was about five years ago. It was basically a firm of solicitors. To put a very long story short, what happened is cyber criminals had got hold of one of the solicitors, the lawyer's username and password for Office 365, and they sat and waited for just the right moment to strike. In the middle of a PDF document, in the middle of an email chain, they changed the bank details. Mm. A quarter of a million dollars was paid into the wrong bank account. Wow. Now I said that to other MSPs across the world, um, you know, that I talked to. The most I've ever heard was from an American uh, MSP that had just won under client, that had just lost shy of $8 million in exactly that scam. Goodness. Now, if you're the MSP that was in charge at the time, what do you think that, that firm of solicitors was saying? They were looking to sue him. Mm -hmm. They were pointing the finger directly at him and saying, it's your fault. You didn't do your job properly. Why, have these, why has this happened? You know, he, got, he hadn't got a leg to stand on. You know, and, and to be honest, one of the reasons why he didn't have a leg to stand on is because he didn't understand Office 365 well enough. Right. He didn't understand it. Um, and that's something else we'll talk about in a second. But going back to monthly recurring revenue, we actually sell uh, and clients are happy to pay for knowing that their systems are secure. They want to know that they're protected. You know, if they've done everything, you know, in the UK, we have, we've got something called Cyber Essentials. Mm -hmm. It's a security process, uh, you know, and in terms of those solicitors, that got breached, you know, that we, they have to report to somebody called the Solicitors Regulation Authority, the SRA. You know, they were pretty much slated for their level of security at the time. You know, once we'd actually 
our MSP had come on board, instigated the MSP Easy Tools um, protection, they were praised for the level of security they got because nothing could get past them. And clients, MSPs globally are charging anything from, we'll use American, you know, $5 to $10, uh, 5 to $20 per user per month. Mm. They're earning from the clients, from their clients, and their clients are happy to pay it. Well, you've got yeah. to do offer to them. It's like ID Agent. I remember when ID Agent came out. Christ, that was a fantastic tool. Um, you know, it hadn't been offered. There, nobody was else was offering that service. I went to my clients and said, for X number of pounds per month, X number of dollars a month, I can tell you when you're going to be breached. You know, if you your uh, username and password have been breached, they were hand over fist. They were begging me to give me, you know, to give them the service. When can we have it? When can we have it? They are happy to pay it. You know that. Look how well you did with ID agent. Um, so yeah. you just yeah. go back and offer the service. Give them something they want. Yeah, you know, it, it's it, what's amazing to me is that I guess they've been saying this for years. You know, it's, um, you know, they, email, you kind of look at your, your major you know, vectors, your, you know, surface attack area, you know, where you're yeah. most vulnerable, most risky. And there's a rise of, of call super complex security solutions. Yep. You know, they just, unfortunately, a lot of times they talked above or around the customer or the, the actual problem that the customer might be facing. But and I think for the longest time, people just kind of looked at email as just email. And as long as it was up and running, we're good. Then you had yep. that rise of phishing and, you know, and, yep. and it's just, it's more, it's, it's, I don't know, it's more pervasive than today than it ever was. Right. I mean, it's yeah. all over the place The the yeah. volume and, you know, just frequency of tax is off the charts. And what you guys are providing is something of, of real value, right. That, that level of assurance, that level of security, right. It's just, yeah, that's why, again, that's why I'm such a big fan because it's one of these things where it's one of the solutions where it has a very, you know, very easy talk track, very no brainer yeah. ROI. Yeah. Um, you know, and to your point, you can create you know, great margin structures around these services because it's not, it's not this, you know, you know, pie in the sky. I have to learn this kind of cyber lingo to understand it. It's very, it's very black and white and it's really simple. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, I've got to be honest, I a techie, but I don't understand all the seams and uh, all the techie conversations. I'm a very blunt, straight to the point kind of guy. If you hadn't noticed already, um, <laughs> and I just like I, I want to talk plain English. I get very confused by XDR and all these terminologies. You know, I was in the industry; I didn't understand most of it, but mm -hmm. I knew what I needed to do to protect my clients, uh, and that was the key thing. How do I protect the clients, and in turn protect myself? Um, and you can't rely on, you know, we see Microsoft doing a whole heap of other things to try and protect the clients. You know, the the children the I'm going a bit techy now. You know, we currently got delegated admin permissions, DAP, and they're moving mm -hmm. to uh, GDAP. All that's doing is causing more problems for the MSP. There's yeah. still a breach point. You know, yeah. for us as an MSP to manage 150, 200, you know, even it's only 20 tenants, you've got to have full access yeah. to the tenants to actually fix them because otherwise it gets stupid. So the, we, the breach point is the easiest point, always the engineer. You know, we've seen so many MSPs being attacked. Um, and once they're into the MSP, once they've got one engineer's username and password, that's it. They can literally destroy that MSP overnight. And, yeah. uh, you know, that was my biggest fear. Um, and that's how we, that's why we built the tools. And it covers all the blooming things that you as the MSP owner f are frightened of. But it's also that, you know, we're a community. MSP Easy Tools isn't just us talking to the MSPs. It's, they come back to us. They ask for new tools all the time. So we're constantly adding new tools into the system, into the platform. You know, many years ago now, you know, we were Microsoft Gold Partners. So we, we know a lot about Office 365. But I've said it before. It's not what you know about Office 365 that's important. You don't know what you don't know. And the only time you'll find out about something you don't know is when you get bitten. 
normally when you've got a client screaming at you, mm-hmm. all this has happened. So we actually, we've got lots of reports that we've got as well. And the big one is our security report. Um, and it's really simple. You know, if you've got a tenant with 50 users in it, the report will come back in less than two minutes. And the very last tab is the action points tab, not Microsoft's stupid action points <laughs> you know, from the security and compliance center, which is always right. buy another product from Microsoft. This is actually how do you fix and secure that tenant? And, you know, even more recently in the last three months, no, sorry, in the last 12 months, we've actually created a templating system whereby you can go from badly secured to fully secured in less than 60 seconds. And these are from the recommendations, not from us, but from the MSPs across the world. This is what you need to do to secure your tenants. And this is real life stuff. This isn't enterprise level stuff. You know, my clients were one man bands up to about 300 users. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trained on Office 365 when I did my Microsoft certification on 50,000 users. Now, how many MSPs get to work with 50,000 users? They don't. Very few, if any. Small business. You know, we most MSPs or the MSPs that I talk to are managing small businesses. You know, typically one man bands up to you know, at most a couple of thousand in a tenant, but they're rare. Vast majority of MSPs globally are managing small businesses. Yeah. Ten users, twenty users, fifty users. That's the type of MSP that we're talking to. But you know, our system will work and we've got some MSPs that have got tens of thousands of users in them. Uh and it gives the results really quickly because that's what it's all about. But it's wow. being on the ball but not having to not having to spend months understanding Office 365 for it to change again in a couple of days' time, which Microsoft are forever doing to help. Yeah. Help no, so, look, what's what's great, right? It, you've got the background. You know, you, you've got the you know. I've been in the trenches. Yeah, yeah. And built the product out to you know solve the problems that you are trying to solve, right? And you do. You see a lot of the enterprise vendors try to come down to this space and. You know, it's just the way they're architected or their price points or just general understanding of this distributed, multi-tenanted, you know, yeah. environment, you know, it, it it's it's hard to start at enterprise and then kind of reconfigure to go yeah. down downstream, you know, where you're building it from, you know, the MSP's perspective, having lived and having yeah. stayed up at night, you know, worrying yeah. about these problems. So I mean, that that's the kind of stuff that as we look at solutions, we look at, you know, some of the platforms that are coming in the marketplace, it's like, you know, it's purpose built for the industry yeah. with the industry knowledge and, and subject matter. And I think those are quite often the the tools, the solutions that yeah. excel in this marketplace. And that's where you guys squarely are. So like, what do you guys look like because you're taking a lot of customer feedback you're building it in the platform adding in you know different layers yeah. different com- you know components but what do you ultimately look like in in three years from now as a as a platform um bigger better but we're still going to be concentrating on looking after the msps mm-hmm. you know i i've got to be honest i hate software vendors uh you know as an msp owner i hated them because mm-hmm. they're always trying to screw me over you know charge me every single time I've got a new engineer, a new client or a new tenant or wherever. So we're going to follow with that philosophy. You know, we're going to stay with our unlimited package, you know, and, you know, our very top, we only, our first package is totally unlimited. We've actually broken it down so that it's cheaper and cheaper entry points now. But, uh, you know, we want to stay the same. We're still focused on what's delivering best for the MSP. So we know, we know what MSPs are like being there, done that, got the T-shirt. Mm-hmm. You know, we know normally the bad at marketing. So we've written all the marketing material. We know that sometimes struggle to sell because the techies, they don't know understand sales process. So we actually show them how to sell, not just our tools, but how to go and sell security tools. So we're just going to increase the numbers. You know, if I could become ID agent, you know, how well you guys did, I'd be a happy man. Yeah. Um, well, maybe yeah. not sell it on. Uh, <laughs> that's not the target. In three years' time, we don't want to be selling. That's not where we're up to. Um, we, we we're thoroughly enjoying what we're doing. We enjoy the interaction. You know, more than anything, it's it's the face to face. It's talking to MSPs. 
you know, listen to their issues and say, I've got a, I've got a tool to fix that for you. Um, you know, just making the lives easy. Yeah. It's, it's not a nice place to be in. Yeah. It can be very stressful, can't it? Absolutely. Well, good news is that, again, to your point, you've been there, done that, gotten the T-shirt and, and uh, now you're, you know, what I love also is that you're, you're kind of purpose driven, right? You like, yeah. you know, you've, uh, you know, why do something that you don't enjoy and, and you're yeah. bringing a platform to the market. I think that just makes a ton of sense. So where's uh where's the best place to find you? The website, mspeasytools.com. Um, so the website is being upgraded as, as we speak. So it hasn't got as much detail and information as we want in it. But the, the thing to look at is book a demo. Just ask. I'll uh, happily show you what the system does. It takes normally about 45 minutes to give you a proper demo, 45 minutes an hour. Um, it'll either be the waste of an hour, which is rare, or it'll be the best hour of your life to, she, to show you exactly how and what you can do and how to, make, how to make your life as an MSP owner easier and more profitable. That's, that's the name of the game. Yeah. Well, Andrew, I really appreciate you taking the time. You know, it's the end of the day there. Uh, and uh, I appreciate you staying late and, and chatting with me. And and uh, definitely encourage uh, folks listening to, to go out, check out the site, check out yeah. the solutions. Uh, said I'm a, I'm a big fan of what you guys are doing and and uh, wish you nothing but uh, continued success. And just, again, I just love the fact that you, you kind of have this MSP background and, and your passion and, and motivation. And, and, you know, I like the, 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 the Frank, the candor to which you speak, right? Just, just yeah. how you're so I've offended, if I've offended any MSP owners, <laughs> I apologize, but I just, no, I, it, I, is, it is where I am. No, I think they just, they, I think they all appreciate it. I think they all get it, right? It's just, you know, cause it's probably so damn relatable. So yeah. all good. Well, thank you for your time. Ways. Thank you for having me on board. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for the channel program. It's a fantastic place to be. Uh, I say, go and look at the reviews, not just of my, our pro, of our products, but, the, the review process has been fantastic, you know, um, to see wow. to see that information come through and the praise that you get for some of the tools is fantastic. But you keep up the good work, Kevin, and uh, awesome. speak to you soon, no doubt. Very good. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Bye.